Welcome to Vegas Revealed episode 36. We have some fun talking with longtime entertainer Frankie Shinta. He's been going absolutely crazy not being able to perform. What's next for him and what he thinks will happen to Las Vegas as it tries to bounce back. It's time for Vegas Revealed. Hey, thanks for uh, putting Vegas Revealed into your ears once again this week. It's Sean and Dana here, and today we're coming to you from a downtown Summerlin, which is on the west side of town, if you're not a Las Vegas resident, kind of butts right up to uh, the Red Rock Resort and Casino in the Red Rock recreation area yeah and a great shopping area out here and lots of things to do so we came out to check it out and speaking of things to do you know entertainers here in las vegas are literally going crazy not being able to be up on stage but we have had some announcements lately that have been encouraging they're more for the future but it is exciting nevertheless usher coming to the coliseum next summer tickets already on sale for that so we were excited to hear caesars announce that plus we learned magic mike is coming back and a theater is being renovated over at the Sahara so that's great yeah it looks like all signs are pointing to Las Vegas making a rebound and today we're getting unique perspective on that rebound boy we have so much to talk about with our next guest Frankie Shinta just you know an icon in Las Vegas Buffalo New York all around the country everyone knows through the years the Shintas they they do I I grew up seeing commercials on on TV for the Shintas shows. And then I move out to Vegas 15 years ago, and the Shintas are here too. I love that there's this connection no matter where we go. Frankie, how's it going? You know what? This whole... um, It's the first time in my life I haven't been performing. Right. But it gave me a lot of time with my grandkids and my family that I probably wouldn't have. And I'll tell you what, there was a plus side to all of this. Because I've watched them literally grow up before my eyes. And every day they're at the house, especially the twins, the two-year-olds. Papa, Papa, Papa. Everything is Papa. And that really makes me feel good. Um, I can't wait to get back on stage. I mean, in front of a live audience. I'm aching for that because that's been my whole life since I was six years old. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate that we can't do it right now. But I really believe we'll get through this. And I'll be back doing what I do, like every other entertainer in this town. So this is the longest stretch you've ever gone without oh, yes. performing? Ever in my life. I mean, never. Usually, like, New Year's Eve was my last performance, really. Um, it was at the South Point. It was like 1,100 people. It was an incredible night. And I usually take a sabbatical, January, February, because, you know, everybody blows all their money in Christmas, New Year's, and Hanukkah. and So January, February, slow down everywhere. You see how Vegas is. So I take a sabbatical. I'll go to Florida. I'll go back to Buffalo and visit family. Um, But And then when I go back to work in March, there was no work. And I'm going, oh, this will be over. It's only going to last a couple weeks. (laughs) Here we are six months later. And no work for... Like, there's lounges, and there's ambient music, they're saying, and I'm definitely not ambient. No. no. <laughs> I was just telling Sean on the way over, we were chatting, on the, and I said, oh, listen, Frankie's not only struggling because he's not performing, but he's used to, like, popping in and seeing his friends or jumping on stage and, I don't know, not only singing, but doing comedy bits. That's what you do. I, it's <laughs> what I live to do. I just love being in front of a live audience, man. I, I miss it so much. And you know what's helped me get through this is those silly little live things I've been doing on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. And my kids talk me into it. <laughs> Dad, you got to do this. Everybody's doing it, and you could make money. And I go, I'm not going to do it for money. Yeah, but Dad, everybody's, you know, they could. I go, I'm not going to do it for money. I'll do it because people are in their homes. And that was the truth at that time. We weren't going anywhere. No, nobody was. Nobody was. And I had up to 18,000 views on Saturday nights. And I'm like, I can't believe people are watching me this long. It was like, but it gave me an outlet, man, to do what I love to do. And it brought me back to a time when my brother Joe and I started way back in Buffalo. We didn't even have a drummer. It was me at the piano, my brother on a bass. And we just, the only thing we discussed was what song are we going to open with? 
and then everything else was ad libbed. And that's how my lives have been. And it's been fun. But I kind of really want to get on stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's hard. Well, and, and aside from having an outlet for performing, have those lives kind of helped fill the void of the connection mm -hmm. that we've all lost Absolutely. To? You know, you both work in TV. Even though you're looking at a lens, you still feel the people out there. You know they're watching. And it took me a minute because I'm a live performer. Even if I'm on TV, as always a live audience. And it was it was a little weird for me. I, I would guess maybe for the first 20 minutes. But then I started hearing the comments coming in. And you start feeling the people. I'm going, wow, this is really nice. You know, Frankie, you brought me to tears. You made me laugh. My mom passed away. And you first time I smiled. These are the kind of comments we get at our shows. So it kind of, yes, exactly, it did. It definitely filled a void for me, and I think I'd probably be in a nut house right now. <laughs> if I really, I'd be like in a straitjacket somewhere, like in a corner, going, "Yeah, that he used to perform. There he is over there. He sits in a corner, says he's Frankie Shinta. I mean, that would be me. Yeah. So I, I thank God that I could I could do that. Yeah. And, and, and fill people in on the, for the the history of the Shintas. I mean, you guys came to town. What was it? The Rio, the first place that the you Hilton. the Hilton, the Hilton, in the yeah. cabaret okay. room. Okay. And, and from then, you've seen Las Vegas entertainment evolve, change. Some parts, in some ways it's better, in some ways it's worse. But what do you feel is going to happen now? I mean, are you up for the challenge? Do you think p things are going to go back to the way they were or things might change in a, in a direction that might be more positive for the entertainers and the people in the audience? Well, you see guys like me and other headliners that were like me, like uh, Clint Holmes and people that were not international stars, but we were... Head, Las Vegas headliners, they kind of, we've been pushed to the side for the big names. And I understand because you put Bruno Mars in an arena, you're drawing uh, 16, 18,000 people, and they could pay him a half a million dollars. But my thought process now is they're not going to be able to put 18,000 people anywhere right now. So guys like Bruno Mars. They're, not that they're in a bad position because he's a multimillionaire. It's going to be easier for a guy like me to go back to these showrooms, I think, because they could put 300 people in a 600-seat room, still make money, still pay the entertainer, and have entertainment in their casino. And I think that might be a positive. I don't know. I'm praying to God that the vaccine comes out and we could all go back to our normal mm -hmm. lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as you see with the flu... Even with a vaccine, yeah. still tons of people are are dying. Yeah. And I think that's still going to be the case. But I do believe, and Vegas has changed, man. I mean, when we came in, there was Siegfried and Roy. There was Clint Holmes. There were the Shintas. There was uh, Lance Burton. Oh, yeah. Uh, and and when was Walsh. this? When did you guys first 2000. come? 2000. Okay. okay. And then when 9-11 happened, uh -huh. I had an idea in my heart. <clears throat> Let's do something for Las Vegas. Let's do a concert with all the headliners. Now, I never got a lot of credit for this, but I didn't care. I was brand new to the town. So I was kind of pushed in the back of, of, the, of the theater. Uh -huh. But it was my idea to do this concert. So every head, headliner in Vegas did a show, and it was the biggest show ever in this town. Wayne Newton, Lance Burton, uh, Siegfried and Roy, uh, Danny Gans couldn't do it, but he wanted to. But every headliner at the time did this show, and it was absolutely heart-wrenching. It was the most incredible thing I've ever seen, to work with all these people. And as years passed, they started four-walling entertainers, which means you pay for the room, because some young kid went in and said, why are we paying entertainers when they'll pay us to perform in our room? And some entertainers did it, hence four walling. Mm -hmm. After our contract ended at the Rio, they said, we'd love you to stay. Give us 24 grand a week for the room. And I'm going, 20, 24 grand? I mean, we're a family. Yeah. And I was making a lot of money at the time, but I was dispersing it to my people because that's the way I was brought up. And I didn't have 24 grand a week. So we started four-walling at other places. 
like the Sahara, which I like to call the Titanic uh-huh. at the time. <laughs> no, no, no discredit, but at the time, I they must have been, don't close those doors, get the shit done. So <laughs> we put almost a quarter of a million dollars into the room of our own money. Uh-huh. Um, sound system, carpeting, and we, we had to walk away from it. We couldn't even take it out of there. Because of the unions, it would have cost us more to take it down and bring it back than to leave it there. Right. So we lost basically everything. And then through God's grace, we got back on our feet and we started performing around the country. We started performing back in Vegas. I made the decision for my family. We will never four wall again. We're going to get paid. It may not be the 50 or 60 K we were getting at the Rio, but I'm not going to perform unless I'm getting paid. You know, good for you. And that's this... what we did, and it got us back on our feet. And then COVID hit, and here we are. Yeah. At my one of my favorite places. Isn't yes. this nice? This is Trattoria Reggiano. Yes. Right? It's your, yes. Because you know everyone everywhere, and there's always, you're like, you want to go to my friend's pizza shop or my friend's <laughs> restaurant? I'm like, I don't know, Frankie, you pick it. He was so kind. I called him. I said, Frank, Frank Badano, he yeah. owns like 55 businesses here and I said he goes geez it's closed he goes but my manager Becca's there she'll let you in and you could do whatever you want you yeah. you're gonna have cameras I go no it's it's a podcast yeah. with two friends <laughs> well yeah yeah just do whatever whatever you need she'll give you and I thought that was so nice it's yeah, it that's one thing about and he's another back east guy mm-hmm. well and, and I feel like this is a very Italian way to sit down and have a chat too right, it is. isn't it <laughs> isn't we locked the door after you walked in <laughs> <laughs> Now you can't Uh-oh. leave. <laughs> J- just don't take us out the back door. That would yeah, be bad news. I know. Remember the Bronx tale when yeah. he locked the oh, door? Yeah. Now you can't leave. Oh, I thought that was a great scene. It is. Oh, my gosh. But it's, this is great. I'm so glad to see you both See you both, yeah. and that you're doing this. This yeah. is great. It's been great to talk to so many people we've talked to through the years. Well, and, able- you know, you talk about that four-wall mm-hmm. situation, and I feel like that's the situation that we found ourselves in, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. It was almost like locking yourself in to... To things with you couldn't do anything on outside the box. And, yeah, you know now we've you know taken our destiny into our own hands and taken our future into our own hands and the sky's the limit at this yeah, point. That's yeah. right, and you're your own boss. Yeah, you were locked in a box too. You really were. Yeah. Oh no, you can't do go. No, yeah. can't do that. Can't do that. And if I don't know if you ever saw the footage of the newscasts across the country because of the teleprompter how many hundreds of people read the exact yes. same story, exact verbiage, mm-hmm. and it was scary to me. It's on the feed. And oh, the, my it, God. And, know, and I was people like... People cut and paste. And I thought people just said the news, you know. Right. And that was only like six months ago. I saw that, and I go, that's really weird. Mm-hmm. And you are you broke free from that, and I yeah. think that's great for you guys. Yeah. It's been great. It's been great to be able to have conversations. You know, I think we like to talk, so that's always good. <laughs> um, I wanted to quickly say, though, when you were talking about the, because um, I'm thinking of things that you were talking about when you were talking about, you know, the bigger artists coming in and all that kind of thing. But I must say, through the years, the 15 plus years that I've lived here, when I bring people to shows, yes, it's great to see Bruno Mars. Yes, it's great to see Gwen Stefani. It's a great show. But whenever I bring them to shows like yours, I feel like people leave and they go, "Man, that was fun." Like, people have a good time. It's an experience. It's an experience. More at our, And it feels like you're in Vegas because we can see those shows somewhere else at a war memorial in Rochester. Right, you know? right. I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. You know, we never, our show was never contrived. It was yeah. always, and it was always performed to the audience, not at the audience. Right. So if there's a guy in the front row looking at his phone or not clapping <laughs> or not interested... That's where my brother and I turned into Don Rickles. I mean, that was us, Whether no matter what race, religion, nationality, but people knew it was like a Don Rickles. They knew it was from our heart. It wasn't to demean anybody, yeah. and it, it's still that way, even though I'm on my own now, which is another story, yes, you know. Yes, yeah. And yeah, um, it, it's, um, I love the fact that I could reach out and grab their funny bone and grab their heart at the same time. And I could turn a guy around that's miserable, that <laughs> walks in going, what the hell is a Shinta? Right. And I don't, why are we here? Why am I here? Right? And at the end of the night, I mean, literally, I remember performing in a place in Detroit. And there were these guys in the front row. Uh-huh. These guys. They had the voices like this. 
and they're all talking. You know, they all got that same voice. Yeah. yeah, yeah blah, blah, blah. And my sister's singing. So I started breaking the oranges really good. Hey, come on, guys. This ain't, you're not back in Sicily. Right. Calm down. So there, you could hear them going, I want to know who this is. And, <laughs> and uh, they're getting mad. Well, I, I know how to handle this. So I looked at them. I broke the oranges a little bit. And then I made my sister come out, and she sang an old Sicilian song, Mama. Okay. Mama, yeah. I missed the day. Well, these guys went from angry to crying bubbles. I mean, they were like little kids. <laughs> Beautiful. They're looking up at us going, I love you. And we turned people around. Yes. Because some people don't know how to smile or laugh or feel. And the fact that we're able to do that, man, that's a blessing. It's easy just to sing and look at the back wall. But when you could reach their hearts, that is that to me is everything. Right. And it, I live for that. And I think that's why people like our show, because we're real. Yeah. You know, Joey was the guy and my brother who, if you don't know, my brother passed away two Novembers. It'll be three Novembers wow. ago. It's 2017. Wow. You've had we a lot of loss. A massive had... stroke. And um, he was the one on stage when I would say, hey, we're going to come out and meet you. We'll sign some CDs. Yeah, except for me because I got, I got crap to do, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he meant it. Mm -hmm. And I would look at him and go, Joe, you can't say that. He goes, well, I'm, I, we're not going to get paid if you I'll be right out there with the rest of them. Yeah. But that was Joe's attitude. That's why it worked. We were yin and yang. Right. And, you know, if, if we offended anybody uh, right here, my brother would do that. Right. Joe, you can't say that. Well, come on. And he's looking at the guy waving him going, come on, come on up here. <laughs> like, it's like, and I'm going, Joe, you can't, he'll kill you. No, come on. You know, and I go push my brother out of the way. And even though it was, it was, it was part of the show, the first time it happened, it was ad-libbed. So all that stuff, the ad-libbing, I think, is what made Carol Burnett's show, for the older viewers or listeners, yeah. what, what was the best thing? The outtakes, yeah. the mistakes, the, the accidents. That's what people love about a real show. Mm -hmm. And I think we still have that, and I'm blessed. I'm blessed by God. I could walk on any stage, even in a lounge. I get up on a stage with a band. I'm not the best singer. I'm not the best musician. But I'm going to make that audience watch. I'm going to get them. And I'm going to make them react. And that, to me, is life. Man. I love that. I know. And, and so where everything. did where did the whole Shinta family act come from? How well, did it start? It was, it's, it's funny you should ask. My brother had a band. A, he was in a show band, only as a bass player. This is going back, geez, I want to say uh, I was 18 years old. So uh, it's a long time ago, <laughs> uh, 50 years ago. Yeah. Uh, no, not that long. No, uh, 40, you're not. 43 years ago. I was going to say. Wow, I'm not that damn old. I'm 63, so yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not good at math. Yeah. I was terrible. I went to vocational high school. So. <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, sit there. Um, so um, his show band, last gig was in Hawaii. I played the piano. They needed a keyboard player. The last eight weeks of the show band were in Hawaii. They decided they're going to live there. My brother and I go 6,000 miles from our family in Buffalo. I mean, really, I had eight Sicilian uncles, yeah. seven uncles, two aunts. My grandparents were still alive. I'm not going to leave my mother and father, my brother. So we went back home with nothing. Well, we got home. My brother packed his van. He was going to leave to move to Florida to sell alarm systems with a keyboard player that left the band that I took over. Well, I get a phone call from Paul McGuire. He was the ESPN commentator, ex-Buffalo Bill. He was okay. a kicker yep. for the Buffalo Bills. Hey, Frank, and we didn't have speaker phones. We had the phone on the wall with the long cord. Right. If you had the long cord, you had money. Oh, my gosh. We had the long cord. My mom had the long cord. Right. And you could go like, <laughs> oh, look, I could go all the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> For <laughs> your privacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could walk all the way around the corner with yeah, that cord. And love then it would long always cord. get tangled. So I would. Ho I held the phone up, and he's going, yeah, this is Paul McGuire. Is this Frankie Shint? I go, yes. He goes, I hear you play great piano and uh, sing. I need a piano bar player. And my brother's sitting across from me and my father. And I go, geez, I don't work alone. I work with my brother. And my brother's flailing his arms going, no, 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 no. I'm moving. I'm, yeah. My father looks at my brother like, shut up. 
So I go, yeah, we'll audition. Yep, yep, yeah, we'll do whatever. Yes, sir. We'll do the whole weekend for free. So we, we audition. We go down to my dad's basement. This was a Sunday. We practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I think three days. We gathered equipment that we was we didn't have a lot of anything. And we went and auditioned. Three nights we played. The Sunday night we played, Paul McGuire walks up and goes, you guys got the job. I'll pay you $200 a piece a week. Me, my dad, and my brother walked out of there crying. Oh my God. Could you believe it? $200 a piece oh a week. And we signed us to like six months. So within three months, you could not get in this place. Wow. Love All it. the Buffalo Bills were coming in. All these judges, yeah. lawyers. Yeah. We would get tips of $100, $200. Oh my gosh. And people, come on, sing this one. You guys are great. It was it was like that piano bar oh, thing. Fun. But we really broke oranges, man. And, but it was a piano bar. But people in the back of the room couldn't see us. My dad told Paul McGuire, you got to move those stools around the piano. No, those are my... My dad lived with it. One night, my dad walked in. He whispered when he got mad. He said, Paul, if those stools aren't gone by tomorrow, my boys are leaving. When we went in tomorrow, the stools were gone. <laughs> so we played there another three months. Jimmy Cosentino, who owned the Playboy Club in Buffalo okay. with the Club 747, came to us and said, I don't know what he's paying you. I'll pay you double. In your life. Oh, my God, $400. Oh my we went to the Playboy Club. We were there 15 years, I think, and five, six nights a week, you could not, a thousand people, 800 people, you couldn't get in this place. And we didn't have a drummer, we couldn't afford one. The drummer from the other band would come in early and play behind the curtain on their drum kit. And Jimmy got us in the Playboy Clubs, and then that's where we met a drummer in Great Gorge, New Jersey. We added him. He was with us 10 years. He left to do magic. Pete O'Donnell joined us. He was with me 30 years. He just moved to Florida to run a family business. And that's how the whole damn thing started. Wow. We didn't know what Vegas was. I came to Vegas, played for Steve Sharippa, mm -hmm. who was oh, oh, yeah. Bobby Buckala, right? Uh -huh. Yep. I yep. never watched Sopranos, do you believe yep. it? Uh, a Sicilian. Oh I just God. didn't get into those shows. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, we played at this Riviera. Uh, he was the entertainment director. And after two weeks there, I looked at him. I said, thank you very much, but I'm never coming back to Vegas unless I'm a, a headliner. That was the last time we were here until we came back as headliners. And God blessed us. And one thing led to another. The Hilton, the Rio came to get us. We were there five years. And then the four wall thing started. And yeah. The carpet was pulled out. <laughs> but like it's been home ever it. since. It's been, yeah, I love it here. Yeah. I do. I love it. And a uh, little secret, I'm working on opening my own place. Good. Amazing. You should. Because what yeah. you just described sound fun. Is that what it's going to be like? It'll probably, uh -huh. first I want to open a gaming place, you know, a bar, uh, okay. gaming, buffalo themed food, some of it, like beef on yeah. whack, you know, yes. the, the real oh buffalo wings, oh, yeah. real buffalo pizza. And uh, some of the recipes I've gathered from my father, my mm -hmm. grandparents, and uh, I got a great partner who used to own Paychex, the company okay. Paychex. Yeah. And uh, he lives in Salem, Ohio. I'm starting to look at property now. Probably won't be till the new year. But, and then I want to own the land, and then in three to five years from there, I want to build onto that my own dinner night. Amazing. Oh my gosh. That's that's so you and that will be that will be that's what you need. Like that's it. That's what I want to do. Oh. Save us a booth. We'll I be know. regulars. I'll have it out. I'll have your name up. <laughs> I'll have your name up. I love it. Yeah. I mean it's funny because we talk about we're we're from the Rochester area and Buffalo and Vegas and you think like it's completely the other side of the country that it's so different but there are a lot of similarities and there's a lot of people that we run into that are from that area that's what vegas is people moved here and yes. they stayed and, they and stayed. I, you know not your age group yeah. but i'm older than you but there's people our ages you know not teenagers yeah. that are starving to be entertained they want to just go out 
eat good food, laugh, have some fun, sing along. I want to do the TV screens with the bouncing ball, yeah. have people sing along. I want to do all of that. Good. I want to have different theme nights, and I'm, I'm not going to stop until I get this done. Yeah. And I'll still be able to perform, travel when I want to, but I need something that's mine, and I want to have Frankie Shintas. That's it, man. I want, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going. It's gonna do. It's gonna do well. I mean, there's no no doubt. No doubt, right? <laughs> no, 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 no doubt. No From your doubt. lips so, to God's ears. Oh my ears. gosh. <laughs> so, what are your plans? And now, you were at the South Point before COVID. Mm-hmm. Are there plans to go back there? Well, I'm, the- I was scheduled to be there the end of August, okay. and then I got the phone call. Right. Yeah, I'm sorry, the governor. So, as soon as it opens, um, I'm gonna do something. I wanted to do something even at the Italian American Club. Yeah. No ticketed events, mm-hmm. and you know, I just. I'm not going to go, I'd rather perform for free than go work somewhere for $200. Mm-hmm. I'll do it free. Right. Good thing I saved all that mob money from my uncle. <laughs> Good thing. Good thing. Me too. I'm living That's off that. That's a joke in case anybody's, <laughs> in case the IRS is listening. <laughs> it's no. true though. But I mean, I, I just won't do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, and. I want to do my show. I'm not going to go in. Well, you know, instead of bringing your whole band, why don't you bring in two guys? Yeah. It don't work that way. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. It don't. You don't. The, yeah. that buffalo? <laughs> That's like saying it use. It don't. I know. Use. I use. Oh. Hey, how you doing? Oh, my gosh. All the time. It's, it's coming out. Oh, it's, it's coming, coming out slowly. Funny. It's coming yeah. out. Do you, think, do you think Vegas is going to turn around as someone who's been here a long time? I think people have seen enough. Not that there's anything wrong with the big Cirque shows. Mm -hmm. I think people, that's my wife calling. Oh, good. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I think people have seen enough of that. People literally want to be entertained. They want to be touched. They want to laugh, especially now. They want to cry. I mean, you know what? I cry at the drop of a hat. My grandbabies, they'll just do something. Like one of the twins will walk up to me and just look at me, Papa, and he looks up to kiss me. And I start to cry. We're emotional right now. America is is starving for affection. Everybody is. Well, I don't care if you're right or left, white or black, you know, whatever religion you are, everybody is hungry for for something of the heart. And I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if it's God. I don't know what it is because I'm not that smart. But I know it's we need the heart back. That's what we need. Because you see these kids. I love protesting because I think it's what you got to do, if you believe. But breaking stuff and ruining businesses and tearing down things. Somebody's lost their heart somewhere. Because there's a way to do it. With a, Martin Luther King Jr. was the best at doing it without, without violence. without, And he got his message out crystal clear. And it changed the world. And I think what's happening, man, people are just... There's no heart anymore. People are growing up without a heart. They're looking at their cell phones. I mean, even my grandbabies, the two-year-olds know how to navigate an iPad to go to the YouTube video they want to see. Of course, kids YouTube. But still, Mm -hmm. it's still like it isn't like, come here, let's do this. Let's let's eat. You know, like little things. My grandbabies will run to the house. They'll run to the fruit bowl. They'll grab an apple and an orange and a towel. And they bring it to me to peel for them. Papa, Papa, Papa. And that's what they, I've done that for all the kids, like my dad did for us and our kids, my babies. And when I do that stuff, it brings me back. I see my father's hands now cutting that fruit. That's what's missing, that tradition that, you know, everybody loved their grandparents. Everybody loved their mom and dad or one or the other. They... We need that back. And I, I think we could get it back. I really believe that. I think, going back to your question, because my yeah. brain, you see, yeah, I yeah. vector. <laughs> um, okay. Vegas can come back, and I think it will, because people are starving to be touched. They want to laugh. They want to feel. They, they want to cry. They want to release. They want to, you know, like get, you know when you cry and you yeah. feel better? Yes. They want that. They want to laugh and feel. Sometimes I laugh so hard I cry. And... That's what people need. And I think, yes, I think that's what's going to change. And that's, I think, a plus for a guy like me because I think I'm going to be wanted back in these showrooms. And if not, 
I'm going to have my own place to yeah, do it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I don't want to rely on anybody anymore. I trust me, and I trust my family. My brother, Tony, who was the, the big guy, yeah. he was a homicide detective. He worked for uh, Steve Wynn for 10 years, Garth Brooks' bodyguard wow. for three years. Garth loved him, man. Wow. And they still communicate once in a while. And uh, Tony's going to make sure nothing walks out the back door. Uh-huh. <laughs> all, you know what I mean? Because yeah. people will steal. When I'm not there, Tony will be there. And I want to be there five nights a week. Even if I'm not performing, I want to walk through. Hey, how you doing? How are you? Hey, what are you eating? You want another one? Bring this guy another loaf of bread. Bring, you know what I mean? Do, I want to be that guy. Yeah. You like those clams? Bring him some more. Bring him another order of wings. Right. What's it going to cost me? I want to be that guy. I want people to feel like they're home. So that's what I'm aiming for. Yep. And spend hours I, there. Yeah, I, I love that. Mm-hmm. The, the whole idea of it, the whole idea of the, the entertainment and the heart and the emotion and, you know, having a, a place where people can go and sit down and, and get that mm-hmm. in uh, an environment. That we don't have anything no. really like that right now in Las there Vegas. There really isn't. I mean, and, and the most of the stuff you see, when I see stuff contrived, like they're trying too hard, that doesn't do it for me. Right. I'm sorry, and I've seen it around. Um, you know, and I can't blame anybody because maybe it's just they don't know how to bring it out naturally. I mean, I'm me wherever I go. You know what I mean? I didn't use some of my vernaculars because the world's listening. But, I mean, that's me. And when I get on stage, I'm me. I'm, I throw the F-bomb once in a while. But that's me. People know that I, it's coming from a good place place in my heart and i believe i'm a good guy i do love everybody i hate everybody and i love everybody if you're good to people i love you i don't care what you do i don't care who you like what side of the political fence you're on if you're good i love you you hurt my family i don't care who you are (laughs) you're you're no good to me you know and that's i that's how i've been brought up and i thank god for that i thank god for my father who I haven't seen, and you know, he passed, uh, it's 25 years now. Yeah, I mean, and my mom, I just lost my mom. I know, mom, you had so much loss. 29, I know. Oh but with all that said. But your spirits are still so good. <laughs> they it's are. It's an example. But I need to get back on stage. You do. Yeah. Oh, you my do. God. oh, my God. And if, gosh. you know, if anybody listening wants to be an investor okay. in my place, you know, I wouldn't throw them out. Okay. But uh, calling all investors. Yeah, putting the word out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to take a super <clears throat> quick break. We usually do this thing, Sean and I, where we do our secret tips, like little <gasps> things we like in Vegas and yes. things we do. So we want to ask you, because we're like, you know, Frankie's been here so long, we might as well ask what his tips are, right? And, and we know you know your way around this city. Yeah. A little bit. So. We are with a <laughs> lifelong entertainer, longtime Las Vegas resident, Frankie Shinta. And we'll be back on Vegas Revealed. Thanks for listening to Vegas Revealed. We want to remind you of all the ways you can stay in touch with us. And one of our big ones is Vegas-Revealed.com because on that website is all our information, all the ways that you can listen to the podcast, and also links to all of our social media. And we put up some some great Las Vegas-related stories that and the happenings going on around town, so be sure to check that out. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as we're out and about. That's where you'll see what we're up to. And, of course, our YouTube page. Yeah, we've got it all, folks. Go to Vegas-Revealed.com and see what we're all about. It is time for our tips of the week. We are with Frankie Shinta. And Frankie, I know that uh, you have... uh, Listen, I I know Dana knows this. Mm -hmm. There is always a quest to find the perfect pizza. (laughs) And uh, I'm wondering, have you found that out here in Las Vegas? There's so many. You know, there really is a lot. Um, like my friend Frank Bonanno's New York style pizza is incredible. The crust, it's a thin pizza, delicious, sweet sauce. But there's one that is kind of a secret, I think, because I'd never hear anybody talk about it. But me being a Sicilian, it's a Sicilian crust pizza, and it's a thick crust, but not a doughy. It's a thick, crunchy crust around the edge, and uh, they use margarita pepperoni on it. And the sweet, I think, San Marzano tomatoes for the sauce. Oh, my God. Sweet basil on top with the mozzarella. And it's so good. It's like grandma made it. 
it's that thick like it just comes out of the oven and it's like you bite into it and the crust is like it, even though it's like almost uh, three quarters of an inch thick like a quarter of an inch of it is just thick like crust oh it's like gosh. you hear that crunch oh. and it's so good it's that buttery golden crust that's one of my favorite and you things. said the pepperoni is good margarita too. pepperoni yeah. now see people cut corners i don't know why but back east like in buffalo yeah. you can't go anywhere without getting it if you ask for pepperoni that is nobody's going to put anything but margarita pepperoni because the way it cooks down it's a little more greasy but you're eating pizza you're not looking to diet but I'm telling you, when it burns a little, the pepperoni yeah, on the top and the it best. just starts to shrink. Oh <laughs> my God! And it's just so good. And it's you could buy it here though. You could buy margarita pepperoni here. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's a few places. That's one of my favorite things. And then Don, is Don DeMarco's Pizza, right? That's on Charleston. Don DeMarco's. It's on Charleston, right? Charleston, Charleston. and Wallapai. It's okay. in the Smiths Plaza. Okay. Don so- DeMarco, Al Scaliot owns it. Places I. One of my favorite secrets, I gotta say, is the Italian American Club. Yeah. They moved the lounge into the big room. Everybody spread out, and you could hear live music. Mm-hmm. And I think that's great to sit down and hear real, you know. And every night there's somebody different. Mm-hmm. I love that atmosphere. Yeah. Not because I'm Italian. Yeah. Because you don't even have to be a member to go there. No. You People could be don't anybody. Realize it. Yeah, we yeah. talked about that last week. It's when I was there one time celebrating a friend's birthday, and you just showed up and got on stage and you were doing thing. I don't what was that thing you put the little napkin around your head and oh came in God. as an old woman that what was, was that it was something that was like Jerry Tiffy <laughs> yeah. I, yeah he was being uh, Grandpa Nunzio and I was I was being Grandma somebody and uh, yeah it was, it was, the argument we sang <laughs> see just we just had stuff lived. like that right I love that stuff yeah. I live for that yeah but you know what You if you look around no matter where you're from Vegas is, it's kind of still the melting pot mm-hmm. of, of the world. Everybody comes here. I'm not sure about the entertainment capital anymore, yeah. um, but I think we could, it could be. And I think they got to strive for that. Because, you know, when you call a city the entertainment capital of the world, you got to have entertainment, not just shows that, you know, that look at the back wall. Like, uh, nothing against, again, like I said, the big search, those could go on with nobody in the audience. I want a show that's working to me. If I'm sitting there, I want them to look at me, talk to me. I want to feel that. And I think people are starving for that. Frankie, what a pleasure. Yeah, it's great to see you. What a pleasure. And you know what? One of my favorite pasta dishes, uh, Penny Vodka. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right in this place that we're sitting. Yeah. It is And it's a great location, downtown Summerlin. We get it to go. Mm. It's I never order Italian to go. Yeah, that's that's, that's how big good time. It is. Yeah, <laughs> and everything here is great too. Yeah. and I I'm so glad we were able to meet today. Yes, it's been great as usual. So much to talk about. We could talk to you forever, and we will continue to keep in touch. And thank you. And we'll so see you much. back there. Listen, thanks everyone for listening, and we'll of course be back next week here on Vegas Revealed.